crash catches up with one of cricket's great cult figures. He was more than just a unique character, he was a bloody good player as well. He played 14 tests between 77 and 82 before crossing to World Series cricket. And I must say, I love the fact you've come dressed in character as the nasty fasty from the 80s. Tony Gregg was my first test wicket and I called him number one. And I think, I think he thought it was number one commentator. But no, he's my first test wicket. Uh, in the first innings at Lord's in the Jubilee Test. Uh, uh, Tomo, in his final year of high school, I can guarantee you his parents attended more than he did. Uh, Tomo was one of these guys who could have gone to soccer, he could have gone to rugby league, he could have gone to cricket. He was just a magnificent athlete. His father used to make the big fibrous plaster sheets and he'd spent his youth lifting these and helping his dad. And I was on the brick wagon. Heard. So you'd be made 12th man. I said, it's wrong, Tomo. It's wrong. You, you know, you should be opening the bowling with Dennis Ellie. I'm going to pull a hamstring right now so that history could tell the full story about the Lily Tomo greatness. Tomo looked at me and he said, you pull a hamstring. He said, I'm pulling one too. So if you talk about the baggy green and what it means, I was prepared to sacrifice my spot in that position in history and uh, give it to Tomo. And Tomo would not accept it unless he earned it. That sums up the baggy green and that sums up the camaraderie behind the baggy green. Well, uh, Harold Larwood and he, he come up to me. He said, laddie, he said, I love the way you bowl, you got the devil in you. And, and I thought, that's what really fast bowling's about. You got to have a bit of devil in you. Mate. Do I go down this path or do I take a once in a lifetime experience with Kerry Pack as World Series cricket? And there on the back, on the back veranda at Jeff Thompson's place, my wife was with me. She uh, also was involved in the decision. Tomo said, sign. Who do you want to play with? I wanted to play with the Lilies, the Tomos, the Marshes and with well, all these guys. We got a lot of close-ups, we got the microphones, uh, we got the coloured clothing, uh, we got the chains uh, and of course um, we had hair. We had... Playboy Bunny jumped over the fence. She's latched onto my back and around my neck like a limpet and I'm coming in with the bowler <laughs> and uh, she's on my back. And Greg's yelling abuse at me. I said, I can't do anything. Have a look at this. And I've turned around and there she is uh, on my back. Was it a uh, bench has been dropped from up, from up top. Uh, there was uh, the big wire fences were pushed down. Uh, there was uh, machine guns going off. Uh, there was the, the army had arrived with tear gas uh, firing bombs. Uh, the dressing room was uh, pretty, uh, pretty heavy. Uh, very quickly, Tom and I are at the gate. We had our coffins up and a chair. The coffins were against the door. We were against the coffins. We had our chairs up. We had our helmets on. And we are holding like this so that they, 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 when they charged, if they come through the door, we had some protection and there was glass flying through. Uh, in between us was the head of security. He picked the two biggest guys to be in, a fr in the front of. And Tomo says, uh, where's, where's the army? Where's the army? Where's the protection? He said, come soon, come soon. And he's hiding behind the two of us. Dennis Lilly had a pair of sandals and he was going up behind people's ears and clacking the sandals. Hooksy's, Hooksy's threatening to sue Max Walker uh, if he printed any of the photos, him looking scared. Gary Gilmore hid in the lid of the seat. He lift the lid up and he's down in the bottom with a glass and a knife and fork laying in there like that with the lid down. And I said to Tom, I said, mate, what are we going to do if they bust through? He said, uh, I'm going to start smashing things like they are. And I said, good idea. <laughs> so that was our plan. And just before you retired, there was a big back page headline in one of the Sydney papers, uh, I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Pascoe's thinking of quitting. And you did, but you were, you were genuine, weren't you? Like, cricket wasn't supporting you, was it? Well, the contract for World Series Cricket was $22,500 a year. At Bankstown Council, I was earning 18000 18, a year. And that was for two years. And then I had a short stint where I earned a little bit of money. Not a great deal, not like what the guys are getting here. But they've got the guarantee contracts, they've got all the sponsorship. That's what we fought for. But uh, let me say, it, in the long run, the hungry hand will always get the ball. Whilst we have all these securities in place, 
I think the pendulum has gone a little bit too much. Um, I'd like to see the players earn as much as they can, but at the same time, um, you're getting players that are protected uh, physically. They're not playing shield cricket. They're not playing grade cricket. They're only playing international. Let me tell you, it was easier to play test cricket. The hardest cricket of all was World Series. The next hardest that from that was grade cricket, Sydney grade cricket. The next hardest, uh, you know, was uh, shield cricket, and the easiest was test cricket. Test cricket was the easiest of all. You had the best players against the, you know, that could catch, that could that strategize. Test cricket was a breeze. But go down to grade cricket, there was that much difference between a good first grade player and a good first grade. And you'd get back to Bankstown and the, and the boys are expecting miracles from you. So if you're playing in the test level and you've got a contract, oh, I'm not going to play shield cricket, I'll be exposed. I'm not going to play grade cricket, I might get injured. So I think the contract has probably made them a little bit comfortable. Well, you still spin a great yarn, Lenny. It's been great to have you here today. You've had a wonderful career and a colourful life. Well played. Thank you, Crash.